Kepa went from this. To this. Welcome to Football Pill and today we are looking at why Kepa Ariza Balaga has made so many high profile mistakes at Chelsea. If you are going to enjoy the video, please leave a like, subscribe, notifications on and let's get into it. So why has he really made so many mistakes despite being the world's most expensive goalkeeper? It all started when his dear dear girlfriend left him, Andrea Perez in 2018. Kepa had been with Andrea Perez for about 9 years before she decided she wouldn't take the Ariza Balaga surname. Meaning, they started dating when Kepa was 15 years of age and now is 25. She must have been his rock in the relationship and to leave him must have made him heartbroken. The shortstopper was always flaunting his girlfriend on social media, posting pictures of them on vacations before, you know, the relationship ended. Now, Kepa had a promising start to life at Stamford Bridge. In his first season, he had 14 clean sheets just behind Ederson and Allison. He considered 39 goals in 36 games, which was promising. Kepa had big boots to fill right from day one with his predecessor Thibaut Couture leaving the club with a match winning performance in the FA Cup and as a Golden Glove winner in the 2018 World Cup. And combine that with his 70 million price tag which honestly wasn't his fault but remains his burden to bear. In the mental aspect of things, Kepa did a better job than most would have done at dealing with the pressure. While Kepa has been criticised under Lampard in the 2019-2020 season, his shot stopping under Sarri was even worse. This is because he faced much easier shots under Mauricio Sarri than under Frank Lampard. He was not criticised under Sarri due to his age and that this was his first season at a big club but Lampard's attacking style of football hasn't been to Kepa's advantage with his 54.5 save percentage, the worst in Europe's top 5 leagues. Meaning, any goalkeeper you can think of in Europe's top 5 leagues was better than Kepa last season. Any goalkeeper at all. That's more than 90 goalkeepers that have been better than Kepa last season and with team at the back, Chelsea still qualified for the Champions League and got to the FA Cup final. You could say the team could have done better with another goalkeeper. Moving Kepa to a team in the championship might even be an upgrade for him at this point. Now, taking a look at Kepa's biggest weaknesses. His tendency to swing his arms before saving, his decision making and long range shots. Starting with his tendency to swing his arms before saving. While this technique that Kepa uses can be used in generating momentum and stretch while saving the shot, it is crucial to execute this movement perfectly or it results in more goals considered. This has happened to Kepa plenty times. First, Gundogan's fourth goal in City's 6 0 win over Chelsea. The shot could have been saved by Kepa, but just because of Kepa's swing, he lost valuable milliseconds and considered a goal, even though he got his fingertips to the ball. A similar situation happened against Newcastle United. Chelsea were in control of the game until the 94th minute when Isaac Hayden's header was able to beat Kepa. From the goal, we can see that Kepa was swinging his arms again. This makes him lose valuable milliseconds and even though he got his hands to the ball, he couldn't keep it out. The same thing happened with Mkhitaryan's goal in Chelsea's 3-2 win over Arsenal. As a goalkeeper, you need to have fast reflexes and if you waste valuable milliseconds swinging your arms, you concede lots of goals. Another example is Sergio Aguero's penalty in the League Cup final. Kepa did well to guess the right way and get his hands to the ball. However, his misjudged movement before the shot meant he was always a second behind the shot and Chelsea went on to lose the shootout. Now, this movement can be effective as seen in the shootout against Frankfurt and Tottenham, but the probability of failure is higher than the probability of success. It's a surprise to see a top level goalkeeper adopt such a strategy. The swing is also the reason why most normal shots appear unsavable when Kepa is in goal and why normal saves appear to be spectacular. Kepa's decision making. Kepa's very bad decision making. Kepa's indecisiveness cuts across from his 1v1 scenarios to his reluctance to come off his line. Of the 47 goals he conceded, he didn't move for 30% of them. That's 14.
When it comes to 1v1 scenarios, Kepa is prone to indecisiveness. There are two mindsets when dealing with 1v1 scenarios as a goalkeeper. Either you stay close to your line or you rush out and hurry the striker. While both methods have their advantages and disadvantages, Kepa often does neither and is caught somewhere between both. This means the attacker firmly has the advantage when it comes to these scenarios. Kepa's tendency to stay rooted to his line instead of collecting crosses puts more pressure on his defenders. This can be seen in the goal scored by Sheffield United against Chelsea. And also the goal scored by Newcastle at St James's Park. Kepa's reluctance to come off his line resulted in Antonio Rudiger facing an unnecessary 1v1 and losing out, resulting a goal. If Kepa had come out for the cross, such a situation would have been avoided. Another issue is Kepa's tendency to dive backwards rather than forwards. Common sense says diving forward to meet the ball rather than moving away from it results in a better chance of stopping the ball. But no, Kepa has invented his own style. This was evident in Chelsea's 2-2 draw with Arsenal at Stamford Bridge. Despite having a man advantage, with Kepa conceding two goals from two shots faced, the Chelsea team put in a good performance but their goalkeeper left his gloves on the training ground. The first goal was more of Ungolo Kante's fault, but the second goal from Hector Bellerin was preventable but it looked to beat an outstretched Kepa. This shows that just because a goalkeeper is outstretched doesn't mean they are covering their nets with the most efficiency. The mistake in the goal comes down to angles. We can see Bellerin attempting to take a shot from the edge of the box. Kepa's position is not the problem. He can save a shot from his near post and a central in the net in relation to the shooter. But we can see Kepa swinging his arms yet again. Now, after the shot, it shows that Kepa is diving backwards in relation to the angle of his set position. The green line indicates where Kepa should have dived. The first line shows where Kepa dived. The second shows where Kepa could have been more successful. Bellerin's shot passes through the second dive while it's moved past the first dive with ease. So if it's that easy, why would Kepa dive backwards? Why? 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 Well, only Kepa will know the answer to that. At 1.87 meters, Kepa was about average for La Liga, but in the Premier League, more than 80% of goalkeepers are taller than him. Kepa also has bad positioning. Most times, he overcommits to his near post, making him vulnerable against cutbacks. Kepa conceded 19 goals from outside the box last season, breaking all sorts of unwanted records. It's difficult not to sympathize with Kepa due to the difficulty of shots he has faced this season. The general inexperience of the playing and coaching personnel has resulted in the team conceding high quality chances. Kepa is like a constant headache for Chelsea fans, which you forget about as time passes, but with another mistake, boom, you remember him all over again. It all comes down to two things. It's either Chelsea have one of the worst defenses in the league or they have one of the worst goalkeepers in the league. But if someone like Nick Pope can perform better in lesser defenses in the league, I think we should know the answer to that. Kepa has never had a single season with a safe percentage higher than 70%. That should raise some questions about Chelsea paying such a huge amount on someone with such statistics. And the coaching staff at Chelsea, are they aware of Kepa's problems? And if they are, how are they helping him with it? After the 2019-20 season, Kepa is now the worst goalkeeper in Premier League history. Seeing he considered 8% of the goals scored against Chelsea in their history. He has been at Chelsea for just 2 years and the Premier League has been run for 28 years and he has considered 8% of the goals scored against Chelsea. Wow. The only ability of Kepa which has shown promise is his passing ability. His ability to pass accurately over medium and long ranges is particularly useful in evading pressure. But still, he has cost Chelsea just too much. It puts even more pressure on the strikers to score once they know they don't have a reliable goalkeeper between the sticks. So Kepa puts pressure on his defenders by sticking to his line and not coming out to collect crosses. He also puts pressure on his attackers to score more goals given they can't rely on him. Lampard has also shown that he doesn't like Kepa, dropping him for several games even in the UEFA Champions League. Chelsea's backline hasn't been of advantage to him. Frequent change of personnel and inconsistent performances have all contributed to his failure. So yes, that's all. Thanks for watching. If you enjoyed it, be sure to leave a like, subscribe your notifications on, and as always, see you next time.